all, myself, Dr. M. Lakshmi Devi, Associate Professor in the Department of CACDS at Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. In this video lecture, we will discuss some more programs based on structures which are there in question bank. So, in the previous video lecture, we have already discussed some programs. In this we'll, uh, video lecture, we will discuss some more programs here. So, first program is to write a C program to pass a copy of the entire structure named stores containing members, product name, price and quality and quantity to a function. So here to uh, what we are we need to do here is we need to pass a copy of the entire structure named stores. So structure name is stores here struct stores inside this it has the members like product name and then we have price then last we have quantity. So we need to pass so inside the int main function, so we can declare the variable here itself or we can declare things as we do for any other variable. So struct stores and then suppose we declare a variable of type A. So we need what we need to do here is we need to write a user defined function where we are passing a copy of entire structure. So we, we need to pass the entire structure. So structures can be passed by two ways. First one is pass by value. First one is pass by value, next one is pass by reference. So when we are passing the structure by value, so we are actually passing a copy of the structure. When we are actually passing, when we are passing the structure by reference, we are passing the address of the structure. So that is what we mean. Let us see the program here. So this is the structure stores. So it has three members. First one is a character array, next one is price, it is a flow type, next one is quantity, it is of integer type. So here we have defined a function, user defined function which receives a copy of the structure. So type of this variable is struct stores and here uh, just we are displaying the name of the, just we are displaying the details of the um, structure here. So s dot in order to access each member of the structure, we need to use the dot operator. So variable name dot the variable name. So here this is a variable name. This is this is a member name here. So s dot product name in order to access this information, s dot price to access this one and s dot quantity to access this information. Just we are printing the information for each particular member of the structure. Next inside the main function we are declaring a variable of type my we are declaring a variable my store of type struct stores. And here itself, in this line itself, we are initializing the different members of the structure. So example product is, so it is assigned uh, one to one. So example product is stored in this variable and then 19.99 is assigned to this variable price and quantity has, quanti the value of quantity is 50. So when we call this function and pass my store variable to the, uh, and pass this uh, variable. So this is a variable of type struct stores. So compiler will go to this line and it will execute this particular function. So in this function what we have written is just to display the information s dot product name. So when we execute this program and uh, enter the, so it will not prompt the user to enter any details because it will not prompt the user to enter the details, uh, to enter the information because it has been done statically. So at during compile time itself, we have initialized the values, product name, then quantity, and then price. So price of this, uh, price is 19.99, quantity is 50, and product name is example product. So in this way, we can pass the structure by value. Next one is to define a structure. So this is the next program. So here we are going to define a structure called complex consisting of two floating point numbers. So we have two floating point numbers x and y and declare a variable p of type complex. So this is a structure. So type of the structure is complex. So here we are going to define, we have two variables, two floating point numbers. This is float and this one is float, float x, float y. So we are going to declare a variable of p of type complex. So in this way we can do this and then after that we have to in, uh, initial, uh, we have to assign the values x is 0, 0.0 
and y is 1.1 to the members. Now let us see, it is a very simple program. So uh, we have to define the structure first and inside this we need to declare the members. So both are of float type. Next inside the main function we are declaring a variable of type struct complex. So and then here itself we are initializing the values. So this value is x and this is taken by y. So x is equal to 0, 0.0 and y is equal to 1.1. .1. Then when we we can print the values by using this printf function. So p dot x means it is 0, 0.0. So this is p dot x in order to access this one p dot y variable dot the corresponding member name. And then when we execute this program, so these two statements will be printed on the screen x value is 0, 0, and y value is 1.10. Next program is to define a structured data, a type called time struct containing three members, hour, integer hour, integer minute and integer. So here we have to develop a program that would assign values to the individual members and display the time in the following format. So whatever time we are giving, so that should display in this particular format. Suppose we are entering 16, 40, 51. So this is the format which it should be obtained on the screen. Now let us see this. First we need to include the header file. Then we have to declare a structure. Struct is the keyword to declare the structure. Time struct is name of the structure. And hour, minute and second. These are of integer type. Data type is integer. And uh, uh, data type is integer here. So they are belonging, these are members of the structure here. So we put a semicolon at the end. So this implies that we have not defined the, uh, we have not declared the variable of this data type. So this is a user defined data type, which has three variables, hour, minute and second. So next in the main function, we can declare the variable. So uh, as we declare any other variable in TA, uh, then float some A, B, C, etc. And assign values to this. Let's suppose from 10.10. Similarly, we can do this for structure variable also. So here, uh, this is the variable of type structure. Structure type is struct, time struct, and its values are given by, since it has three different fields or three members, we need to assign values to three, uh, it should have three fields here. So 16 corresponds to hour, 40 corresponds to minute, and 51 corresponds to the second. So this is a printf statement. So just we need to modify this in order to display the information. So we need to put a sim after this format specifier, we need to put a colon. And in this format, the uh, value will be, the output will be displayed on the screen. So the first value corresponds to this uh, percentage. This value corresponds to my time dot hour. And this value corresponds to my time dot minute. And this value corresponds to my time the specific variable name dot the member name or the variable name second. So this is the output which is printed on the screen. It is a very simple program. Next one is so we have to define a structure named census with the following three members. So census will have three members. So this is a structure of type named census. Name of this stru structure is census and then it should have a character array city so city is a character array, suppose some 10 or 100 to store the name of the city. Next one is a long integer to store the population, you can say population. And then last one float member to store the literacy level. This is population and this one is the literacy level. So these are the three members of this particular st structure. So in the structure name census we have three members city name of the city then population and then literacy literacy level so we have to write a program to do the following task so we have to read the details for the five cities randomly using an array variable so we need to declare an array of type struct census so that is what the statement implies then after that we have to sort the list alphabetically so then we have to sort the list based on literacy level so we have to sort the list based on the city name alphabetically then literacy level and then after that based on population also and then we need to display the sorted list. So let us see how we can write this program. So first we need to include the header files stdio.h, stdlib.h and 
string.h header file. Since we are going to use the built-in functions which are available in stdlib.h and string.h header file. So here we have defined a structure. So name of this structure is census. So it consists of three members. Uh, then after that inside the main function we have declared the variable of type struct census. It is an array type because it is an array type. So it consists of, uh, it is an array type. So in order to read elements, in order to read values to this array, so we are using a for loop here. So for loop and then by using scanf function, we can read the value into the particular variable. We can store the value into this particular variable. So uh, city name is stored in this variable, population is stored in this particular variable and then literacy level is stored in this particular variable. So then after that, we are using qsort method. So qsort method is a predefined or built-in method. So this is the syntax of this particular method. So first is the cities. So the city specifies here the array. So first we need to specify the array. Then after that, the size of the array and then the data type, size of uh, the data type. So here size of struct, the data type is struct census. And the last one is the comparator function. So this comparator function is user defined function. So this user defined function is defined in this way. So in order to compare, this is the name of the function. So it takes two arguments. So first one is pointer, the second one is also a pointer of type. So A and B are two pointers. So they are of void type, constant void type. So here, what we are doing here is we are comparing the two. Um, we are comparing. So these two structure, these two variables are compared. So in order to access each particular, uh, we need to compare the two particular values by using string compare function. So string compare function, it will compare the two values. City is an uh, array of characters. City is an array of characters or you can say that it is a string. So in order to compare these two, we are using string compare function. So these two are compared. If the return value is zero, then we can say that the two strings are. So it will return some value. So based upon the return value, we can say that those two strings are equal or not. Next after this, we have used one more function. So in order to, so that function will give the sorted list in, uh, in alphabetical order. So in order to display that sorted list, we need to use a for loop here. So since we are using, the data of five cities, we need to print the data of five cities. So therefore we are using for loop here. For a is equal to zero, i less than five. So cities or uh, cities i dot city, then population and then literacy. So based upon uh, this criteria, we are, we are going to print the list. Then this is the uh, program to sort the list based on literacy level. So again, we have used a QSort method, which is a built-in method. So it takes city, that is array, then size of the array, and then size of each data type. And this one is user-defined function or comparative function, you can say. So this also requires two arguments. So first one is uh, array. First one is void pointer. Second one is also void pointer. So it will compare each uh, each value in that array. So it, it is an literacy level. So city has, or each city has different literacy levels. So each level is compared. Uh, each city literacy level is compared by using this function. So it will return. So it will, by using this function, then uh, with the help of this function, we can compare the census records for storing, for sorting by literacy level. Next, after this, we, ha we have again written, in order to display that list, we are using the for loop here. Next, in, this is the uh, program or this is a function to sort the list based on population here. So in order to sort the list based on population, so we are using a QSort method. In this, we need to, uh, we need to uh, give the array name, then size of the array, and then size of the data, uh, size of, by using this operator, the data type, the size of the data type, and then last one is the comparator function. So this is also a user-defined function which is used to sort the list based on population. So this function, it will call this function here. So this function is executed. And then by using this function, we can compare the, uh, we can sort the list based upon 
the population. We can sort the list of cities based on population. So highest population will be sorted, uh, will be displayed third, first and the last and the city with the least population will, will be displayed at the end. Now let us see if we execute this program and if we enter the details for five cities. So city 1, city 2. So this is the data for city 1. So name of the city, then population and then literacy level. So this data we have to input for, we have to give for five different cities. So city 2 is daily. So, so these are just approximate values. Population is 500, literacy level is 89. City 3 is Mumbai. Then population is 450 and then literacy level is 90. City 4 is Chennai, name is Chennai. Then 600 is the population, literacy level is 79. City 5 is Bangalore, population level is 600 and then literacy level is 90. So here, first it will call this function. So this function is called. So we have to, uh, list is sorted alphabetically. After that, in order to print that list. So this is a function. So this is the statement we are going to use to print that, uh, to print that one. So sorted alphabetically, sorted city list alphabetically is, that means by the name of the city. So first B stands, so alphabetically B comes first. In alphabetical order, B stands, uh, B comes out to be first. So therefore B is displayed, Bangalore is displayed here. So here P, B, M, C, N, B. So B is displayed first, the city name is displayed first and after that C is displayed then D and then M and then P. The corresponding details are not shuffled as you can see here. So Bangalore it has this particular data. So 600 is the population and 90 is the literacy level. Next in the second line, after that we need to so we have sorted the list in based on literacy level. So based upon literacy level when you sort, so the first one which comes out first is, so this is the literacy level you can see. Literacy level highest, highest for this is 90, 78, 90, 89 and 80. So 90 is the highest, Mumbai and Bangalore is the highest based upon literacy level. So this is sorted in ascending order. So first the least one is displayed. So 78 and then 80, then after that 89, after that 90 we have. So 90 and 92. So both the cities, they have the same value, 90 and 90. So first M is displayed and then after that B is displayed, Mumbai and Bangalore. Next after this, we need to sort the population. We need this, we need to sort the cities based on the population. So based upon the population size, we are sorting the list here. So this is also in, displayed in ascending order. So first least population is 100. Then the next population is 450. Then after that 500, then after that 600. So in this way, we can sort the list alphabetically by literacy level and by population. Next one is to define a structure that can describe a hotel. So it should have members which include the name, address, grade, average room charge and number of rooms. So we have to write a function to perform the following functions here. So first one is to print out hotels of a given grade in the order of charges. So hotels, they are given different grades. Suppose, so here grades are given as 3, 4 and 5. So based upon the grade which the user wants to print out hotels of a given grade. Suppose for grade 3, we have two different hotels. So in the order of charges, so they will be printed. To print out hotels with room charge less than a given value. Suppose the user wants to find out the hotels with the room charge, suppose 100, less than 100, then that data has to be displayed. Now, now let us see how we can write the program for this one. So we are using two header files string stdio.h and next one is string.h header file. So first we need to define the structure because structure consists of we can in the structure we can combine data of different types. So first one is a string, next one is also a string. So hotel name, the address and then the grade of the hotel, then average room charge and the number of rooms. So then after that, so these are the two functions which we have used, which we have written to user defined functions. First one is print hotels by grid and the next one is print hotels by room charge. So inside the main function, we need to first 
assign values to the uh, values to this particular variable so it is declared as an array the size of this array is determined by this by the values which we have initialized here so from this we can see that uh, the size of this array is 3 here so size of the array is 3 so there are three variables so the size of this array is 3 here next in this next line so we or we can calculate by using this formula also number of hotels so number of hotels can be obtained by size of hotels that means the size of this divided by the size of the first element hotels of 0 next one after that we are calling this function so print the hotels by grade 3 in order of charges so for example so these are the this is the information for the particular hotel which is given hotel a so this is the name of the hotel and then as you can see here there are different there are five variables five members of the hotel first is the name first is the name next one is the address next is the grade and this one is the room charge and this one is the room charge and the last one is number of rooms so these are the number of rooms here so let us see how we can print the hotels by grade so hotels by grade so when you call this function so compiler the control is transferred here so we are passing the name of the array when you are passing the name of the array we need to pass the size of the array also uh, that is given by this one the number of hotels and this one 3 is nothing but the grade of the hotel so we need to select the hotels of grade 3 so therefore this uh, user defined function will be executed here so these set of statements will be executed so in this program we have declared two variables i and j so in order these are the two looping variables i is equal to 0 it will start from i is equal to 0 and then i less than so in our case we have three hotels so 3 minus 1 2 so this will start from j is equal to 0 j less than number of hotels are 3 so when i is equal to 0 3 minus 0 minus 1 which is equal to 2 so in the first iteration next when j value is incremented by 1 so j will be equal to 1 so j will be less than 3 minus 1 so j will be equal to 3 so j also will be evaluated to j less than or equal to 3 minus 0 minus 1 next in the next iteration so uh, j well so this will repeat for j is equal to 0 j is equal to 1 and j is equal to 2 here next after this when i is equal to 1 so j will be evaluated for 0 0 to j less than number of hotels so 3 minus 1 minus 1 which is equal to 2 minus 1 1 so j less than 1 so 0 and 1 will be evaluated so in this way this loop will go on repeating and in each iteration what we are doing here is we are comparing the grade so target grade here is nothing but the value which the user has sent uh, this is the target grade here so 3 is the target grade so if that is matching if the grade is ma if the hotel's grade is matching with the target grade along with that we need to check this condition also that is uh, average room charge if uh, this room charge if the uh, if a particular hotel's room charge is greater than another hotel's room charge then we need to swap the hotels then we need to swap the hotels so this is similar to as we do swapping for two integer variables swapping is done with the help of a third variable suppose we have two variables a and b so a b so we need to use a temp variable uh, first what we do is we, swap, we assign the value of a to temp then after that we assign the value of b to a then temp value is assigned to b so similarly here also we need to declare a struct variable uh, so temp is a variable of type struct here so therefore we need uh, we have defined in this way we have declared uh, this variable a temporary variable is of type struct so this value goes here and then the next value will be uh, pushed into hotels of j and then temp value is pushed into or it is assigned to hotels of j plus 1 so in this way uh, we need to swap the hotels based upon the grade next after that we are printing the uh, we are printing those particular values uh, if if this is matching if the grade of the particular hotels is matching with the target grade then we are uh, printing the corresponding information also next one is so next user defined function is next when we call this function print hotels by room charge 
So inside this, we are passing three variables. First one is the array name, next size of the array, and the last one is charges. So based upon, so this is an array. So the of type struct hotel. This is the size of the array, and this one is the room charge. It is of type float. So here we have by use by using a for loop. So we need to access each variable, and we need to check this condition. Hotels for each hotel. The room charge should be less than the maximum charge. So then, that particular uh, de uh, the address or the details of that particular hotel is displayed on the screen. Name, address, then grade, average room charge, and the number of rooms. So if we execute this program, so if we execute this program and uh, enter these details, so no need to enter the details here. So these are assigned statically. So in the program itself, we have assigned the values. So this is the hotel, first hotel, hotel A, hotel C. So when we are calling the first function, hotels will grade three in the order of charges. So we have selected. So this is the output of that particular function. So grade three hotels are selected, and then they are, they are grade uh, they are um, displayed on the screen in the order of charges. So first the maximum uh, charge is displayed first, and the hotel which charges less that is displayed later on. That means the charges are displayed in descending order. So, O uh, hotel A charges one fifty and hotel C charges one twenty. So, these are the particular hotels which are available in the range or in this particular grid. Next function is so. Next task is to display the hotel room to display the hotels with room charges less than a particular value. So, here the value which we have given is one fifty. So, uh, less than one fifty. You can see here less than one fifty. We have only one hotel that is hotel C. So that is what is displayed on the screen. So in this way, uh, we can write the programs for structures. So in this way, we have written the program for this one to print out hotels of a given grade in the order of charges. So a particular hotel of a particular grade, hotels of particular grade are selected and then they are displayed in uh, decreasing order of their charges. Then I, after this, we have displayed the hotels with room charges less than a given value. So if the user is specifying some value, so based upon that value, uh, what is the what are the different hotels which are available? So in this way, we can define a structure. Uh, we have defined a structure that can describe a hotel, and it includes different information also. So in this way, we have written programs based upon structures. So in the next video lecture. Uh, we will discuss some more concepts of C programming. Until then, thank you. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.